Right, so I'm going to make this episode a single episode separately for the Spangen Home on how to make chainmail or how I make chainmail. There's lots of videos out there, but I feel this is this works for me. It helps me make um, a lot of chainmail quite quickly. So first of all, there's um, about eight items that you'll need uh, to make chainmail, all in all. Um, first off, uh, a tube. So this is just an aluminium curtain rail tube. Uh, diameter doesn't really make a difference, I found. Second, you'll need a mandrel, right? So the mandrel is just a steel rod that I've drilled a hole near the end, not all the way at the end like that one. Off center, you'll see also why now. It's also been uh, greased up. The greasing does help. You'll see also why a bit later. Third, I've made this uh, block here. You can refine it a little bit more. Um, I might refine it as I go along. So with that, I have an 8 mil hole there for the mandrel. And there, I have a 2 mil hole that I've drilled for the wire. All right, and you'll also see how this all works, comes together. Size-wise, I think this is a 35 mil thick. doesn't really matter. Um, it's what I had, so and it seems to work quite well. All right, then, importantly, you'll need a drill. Uh, any drill will work. This one, I can set the speed. But yeah, any drill will work with that. Then, for... Um, for the uh, wire itself, I have I have myself some just plain uh, 1.6 mil galvanized wire. Okay, so it's relatively cheap. You can find it uh, most hardwares. You can buy it in small amounts and large amounts. I think I bought a five or 25 kilogram here originally. I've put it on a sort of a drum roll. Um, just so it feeds a little bit better otherwise why is a terrible thing to use otherwise it gets hooked up knotted up it's usually just quite terrible so this works well for me um, and that helps me feed the wire while I'm uh, making coils okay right tools that you'll need after you make the the wire the coils is a way of cutting the wire tin snips if you do have them otherwise wire cutters will work um, I never used wire cutters as far as I know it can work but it's just a little bit more effort to do use them the tin snips work really well it just takes a burden I've broken two tin snips before two or three actually uh, two before because the tip breaks off by cutting the wire then you'll need two pliers these are a little bit big usually I get a small one usually what I do is I use a big one and then a small one with it but I just have these two at the moment to show so two pliers for that Okay, so next one I think what we're going to do is we're going to show some uh, rolling some coils. Right, so the setup here is I have the wire coming through there, entering the hole this side. The wire comes out this side and it goes through the hole in the mandrel. The drill is hooked up onto this side and tightened onto the mandrel on this side. So always leave a little bit coming through there. Alright, so it sticks out on that side. And now all that we do is we draw. Don't worry if the start off is a bit rough, but otherwise it will sort itself out. Right, and the wire is always a mission to feed. Right, so there, it just carries on coiling, it carries on making a long coil, um, and then you just can carry on. Now you see, that's the problem with the wires, I stru struggle to keep feeding it. Uh, that's my biggest headache with this wire, is actually getting into the problem. The main problem I have with this. Okay, let's carry on, let's finish up this wire. Okay, so now you can see I've made a nice coil. You will sometimes have hiccups here where it rolls onto one another. This, uh, by doing this, it has a natural one tendency to want to feed it across. But you will get instances where it, it does double up like this and it rolls over itself. Um, just a bit more refinement will get it. This is a new block that I've made. 
a bit more refinement but otherwise you can carry on coiling making long long nice coils with this okay okay so now removing this coil from the from the mandrel what you do is that piece that's stuck out what you do is you press it out so you can get it into there all you do is you cut it off okay cut off that piece there pull it out so now once you've pulled that out you can slide the coil off see now you can see the coil it's a small section I'm not making a small section I'm just making a small section now otherwise what you what I would normally do is I'd actually roll the whole mandrel length and you've got a nice long coil right so now it comes to the part where we um, cut the coil up so what I normally do is is I tend to pull it out just a little bit from one another just separate the, the rings and see why I do that now okay so I separate them out just a little bit then what I'll do is let me cut this off okay now what you do is use this for now as you carry on cutting you just cut in a straight line Okay, now what I want to quickly show you is when making buttered mail. Okay, so when making buttered mail, like I said for now, the buttered mail you just cut in a straight line like you saw. If you're going to be making riveted mail, now it becomes a little bit tricky. You can't just carry on cutting a nice, nice long roll. So what you have to do is cut it so there's an overlap. You see the overlap you have there. So when you squash it and you squash it over, you've got an overlap where you can rivet the two pieces together. So you can see that doing it that way, I can't get it in. And you can see now obviously this is a much length a far lengthier process there we go so again there's overlap okay coming back to these now you've got all of these and you see how quickly i've got a, a nice decent pile of rings then to start off is what i would do is i'll hold, make a whole bunch of closed rings so you can see there what I do is if it eventually focuses I butt them up Let's see if you can see that there right so the ring is just butted up Let's see if it can get to focus there we go see just butted up that's obviously the easiest way to make chainmail 
these obviously tear apart easily you can bend them up with your hands um, but this is the easiest way this is how most people will make their chainmail so quick and simple See, once you've actually cut your rings out, you cut all your rings out, then you can actually sit wherever. You can sit at the TV. This is what I used to do. Sit and butt up rings. Sit there with two pliers, watch TV, butt up rings. Okay. So then, what I've got Jay, you'll see, is four rings. Four closed rings. Now I'm going to show you what I do with that. I'm showing you in the process how I make it. So what I'll do is I'll set a batch up and make completely closed rings and leave a bit of these open open rings. Okay? Then I'll take the four. Put it onto an open ring. And butt that one closed. Now this pattern is what you call a four in one. So this is just plain four in one. So obviously four rings into one ring. And it always works like that. You get fancier ones where you've got a six in one and an eight in one. Obviously the weave then is a lot more dense but a lot more effort to make. Okay. And then obviously weight wise will be a thing. Then you get fancier ones where it's a four in one. But then each one of these is sort of wrapped with another ring. So it's essentially an eight in one. Right, so then what I do is make a couple more. I've made so much chainmail. I said I'll never make chainmail again. Not much skill in making chainmail, but it definitely helps build the basis of spending hours. making chain mail or making normal armor okay so there's another four in one now what I'm going to show you is how I put these together so again I'll make a whole bunch of these the four in one patterns, I'll make a whole bunch of them. And then I'll sit and I'll weave it on a cutting board. Okay. So now, see if you can actually see that. There we go. Okay. This, hope I can. Right. So, also, the reason why I pull the coils apart is it's easier to cut. And that you have already these open rings. Now I'll show you these open rings of what I'm going to do now. So I put two four-in-ones together. So like I said, I'll make a whole bunch of these four-in-ones. Okay, so how I start. Obviously I've got these cut rings. I've got all of these cut rings. Then I'll make a whole bunch of closed rings. Make a whole bunch of, of closed rings. And leave a few of these open rings. Then what I'll do is, I'll make a whole bunch of these four-in-ones. Okay? Make finish all of the closed rings into four in one rings then i've got those to go with then what i'll do is i'll start knitting these together so once this camera actually focuses let me show you quickly how i do that okay so you put them two overlapping like that and you take the open ring feed it through the two under the two up again So now, let's see if I can do a nice close up of that. I've got a small patch of four in one. Now it's not much now, you can't really see too much now. Okay. Now, what I'll do now is I'll take a whole bunch of these and knit them in long columns. I'll say about five, uh, 10 or 20 in a column. Then I'll put a whole bunch of those 10 or 20 in a columns next to one another and match them up. And you sort of make a bigger and bigger piece. I usually make my chainmail in patches. So I'll make a nice big patch, 
patch, patch, patch, and then I'll start putting them all together once I have enough. Okay. So, here's now bigger rings that I've made. So you can compare the two together. This is of a 2 mil wire of 2 mil wire over a 10 mil mandrel. These, like I said, are all the 4-in-1s that I've made. So you see, a whole bunch of 4-in-1s. So I make big batches of 4-in-1 rings. These are all 4-in-1 rings. Then, you make columns like that. Now that's a patch. I'll, I usually make it a square patch. And then I'll carry on making those patches until I can put them all together. See, and there's your chain mail. Quick and, well, not quick. Simple to make. Um, very aesthetically pleasing to look at. Um, people know chain mail as soon as they see it. Works nicely. Like I said, with this stuff, with the butter stuff, the more people play with it, the shinier it gets because it polishes itself. So there we go. What I do suggest, which is the mistake I made originally, oh, it's a learning curve. Okay, this is obviously, this is part of a coif I was making, so it's got a expanding weave from the center. Those are 2 mil, two mil wire on a 10 mil mandrel, 1.6 mil wire on an 8 mil mandrel. Start with 1.6 mil wire on an 8 mil mandrel. Yeah, the rings are smaller, you're going to make more, but it is considerably lighter than this. All right, so these two pieces... I would say are roughly the same size, but this one is considerably heavier. These pull apart less easily because it's thicker wire, it takes more energy to bend, but this is far lighter and you'll thank yourself. Start off with something this size. size. Okay, so there we go. I think that concludes our how to make chainmail build. Um, if there's any questions or you want me to elaborate on anything, please uh, comment down below. And then I can, you know, assist any questions or so. So this is something nice. You can carry on making chainmail, make as much chainmail as you want. It's quick, like I said, it's quick and simple. If you're sitting watching TV, make chainmail. If you're on the bus, make chainmail. That's what I used to do. I, I never went on the bus, but when I was sitting in lectures in university, waiting for a lecture or in between classes, I'll sit and make chainmail. Um, it's very quick and simple. You don't need a lot of tools. You don't need fancy tools. Um, all the tools are here, like I said, you can buy these for reasonably cheap um, from any hardware that you can find around you. Alright, thank you.